and welcome to another episode of Third Chances. And today I have a Nancy Rubin Sharf, who grew up in Western Pennsylvania and playing junior and amateur golf events all through college. She has lived quite interesting life. We will get to it with her together because it's it's kind of complicated when I look through her bio for me, but. I, let me just tell you how we met. We met through ASEA, the company that I linked my arms for last almost three years. And I first only knew her from our Zoom calls. So we never actually met in person until about two weeks ago when she was on her way to visit her family in Florida and decided to stop by. And we have spent a really nice short time with, with Nancy and her husband sharing some lunch and talking. And I'm so excited that she agreed to be on my podcast because that's the first time I have a golf pro on my podcast. Oh, so Nancy, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Vera. And not only a golf pro, you have the Redox golf pro. That's true. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, we will get there, I'm sure. We will get to that. Yeah. Yes, we will. yeah. But uh, you sent me bio and I'm not really... I, I didn't get all of that. I know there was some period of time where you took a so-called break by getting married and raising children. <laughs> but other than that, I know you were coaching, you were coached, and then eventually you got to professional playing again back to back in 2018. Is it correct? Okay. Yeah. So I played all the way through um college and I went right out onto the LPGA tour and I was very fortunate back then because they was structured a little differently and they had a winter and a summer qualifying school so I got out in the summer and I played 10 tournaments the rest of that year and that actually qualified as one of my years later on for my 10 years to be fully vested in the retirement program so I got an extra year in pretty quick that year so that was kind of like graduating college again that was fun <laughs> yeah but, but this, is, um, this is already when you are active playing let me go back and figure out yes what bring you to golf what was that what was in a golf that, uh, that made well, you love way it? back we go way back i yeah. just love sports my parents both my dad was very athletic played all the high school sports my mom actually was a really good golfer and played at ohio state Wow. back in the 50s when Jack Nicklaus was a young boy <laughs> so, uh, but I wanted to be a professional athlete and at that time for girls you had golf or tennis that did you start as a kid I started when I was 12 only because that was the rule at our golf course you had to be 12 so I swam on the swim team until I was old enough to play golf Aww. and then yeah and then um I just took lessons from we had a father and a son who were the golf pro and assistant pro at the course mm -hmm. and i started with the son a typical series of six lessons and then very shortly the dad just took over <laughs> like i actually never had to ask for a lesson uh if uh, he would just watch me and say, hey, you're doing this. Hey, you know, and, and we got to play a lot. So I got a lot of little tips and things on the course that well, that's good some for people you. don't get. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And he's a great player. And the story is that I even fixed his smoking habit because we had this little area off to number 10, which wasn't a full driving range, but that's where we could hit balls and go pick them up too, you know, and uh uh, I had a really bad slice or something. And so we were over there for a while and he forgot his cigarettes and he quit. <laughs> well, that's so we good. My slice then a smoking habit. But yeah. Wow, that, you know, that's a really long time ago. So well, I didn't know your mom was playing. That's that's cool. She did. And um we she actually ran like some of our junior events and things like that. And we played one junior adult thing together, and that was the last time we played together. <laughs> oh, so you you never really wanted to be anything else but golf player? Well, not really. Once I started winning and stuff, so I just love playing anything. 
you know, it's just uh, golf started, you know, to be the focus and it kind of came somewhat natural and easy in a way. Uh, and so I was really blessed that I got where I did through college. I almost, after three years of college, tried to go, I could have gone pro after that, but then I knew I needed, I needed that piece of paper for whatever reason. And as it turned out later, when I went to coach the, our local college team here, you had to have a degree to get the job. Oh, cool. And I was kind of glad that I finished school, right? Because then when I left FIU, which was my last two years of school, which it was a different, it was only a two-year school back then mm -hmm. uh, before it became the Golden Panther thing now. But I said, I'm out of school. I'm done with books. I'm done. And little did we know now, as we were both discussing how many how much learning you keep doing because you've got to keep growing just because you're older doesn't mean you stop learning yeah you know, i think so. that's when you stop living when you stop learning I, right. unfortunately i i believe that it became my passion to learn new things in later in life that i was driven by that and i don't know you were very athletic so you were not i but but i was a bookworm from my five years old so yeah. <laughs> not comparable well but plus you came from another country and you had learned a mm -hmm. lot i'm sure yeah so that's you know good for you for braving that too well hey you learned golf i didn't uh, i learned yeah. different languages <laughs> that's true yeah. Yeah. yeah so and then i played the tour for 15 years and then it was getting i was really kind of getting burnt out and you get to a point where some of the first pro I had way back then, you know, I had to at some point find someone else. And it's hard to find and trust someone that will help you and maybe not mess you up worse or, you know. Like coaching. Coaching. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, physically with the game. Mm -hmm. And my coach in college was good but you know it's kind of the way they say things to you and she actually made a comment to me <laughs> at the end of my third year if you don't fix this whatever it was in my swing you're not ever going to be any good and I'm like well right. that's a fine thing to tell your number one player you know I don't know right yeah but as it turns out I went to a biomechanics lab years later hmm. and they hooked you all up you know and the guy reading all the data was not a golfer. And his conclusion was, oh, possible left wrist injury due to blah, blah, blah at the top of the swing. And that's exactly what my coach was referring to. Oh, wow. And I'm like, wow, I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't understand. Or I didn't maybe want to. Yeah. When you didn't put me, the dots together. Yeah. You know, although I did learn her she taught us the rules of golf which when we made it to tour any of her players made it on tour that you have to take a rules test we didn't have to study and we'd get into a tournament and people would ask us for a ruling instead of calling the officials because they knew we knew the rules you were drilled <laughs> which have changed a lot recently but mm -hmm. so then i met bob in uh, like 1995 and we got married live in the land florida and uh he had a business there and he thought it would be good for me to take this part-time coaching job was he into golf as well no no, no. not at all no, not really no wow. which at that time for me being kind of burnt out was oh i got to learn about other things you know right. like <laughs> politics money you know yeah, you well, came from golfing well, families, so that was quite a change. Right. And uh, so I took this part-time coaching job, which is kind of an oxymoron because there's no such thing as a part-time coach. Um, and I had my two kids while I was doing this coaching thing. And I did that for about 10 years and coaching and playing or way two different things yeah so I 
stopped coaching, but then they had this Rhodes Scholar Elder Hostel program, which was, um, we had like a golf school for seniors, you know, and I got to do that pretty quickly after I stopped coaching. And the one other professional I was working with after the first week said, well, how'd you like your first week of Elder Hostel? And I said, oh my God, these people listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and at that time, Stetson was the first university to have a golf Elder Hostel because there are usually other on-campus classroom things or something. Now Elder Hostel programs are a road scholar or like all over everywhere. Um, so I did that for another 12 years and so can I, when, go, can I interrupt you and yeah. go back when you said and it's obvious when you play and when you coach are entirely different things and I'm thinking in my head you were a player first but you were coached by your parents and then have coaches did you find it easy to teach the game or was it difficult because not everybody not every you know even sports star can teach the art, sometimes they don't know how they do what they do the best. Well, and some people, you've heard that saying, those who can't do teach. No, I don't believe in that bad. Yeah, for me, if I want to learn how to do something, you want to learn how to do it from someone who does it better than you do. Exactly, yeah. Right. And so, um, well, when I say the coaching and the playing, because even when I was in college, my focus was on playing and getting to the tour. Yeah. These these girls' focus was on getting through school. I think none of them really were concerned about playing much after, you know, professionally anyway. Like having yeah. ambitions to be so Yeah, like they'll be happy to play golf at their club or whatever, you know. Um, and... <sighs> So I was modeling how I was coaching at practices, like how our coach did, which mm -hmm. was very successful, but it didn't work for them. Oh, well, we didn't have everyone all together. It was a small school and their schedules were all over the place. You know, it's changed since then. Um, cell phones were just coming out. Uh, people listening to music during, you know, with earbuds was a new thing. And they can listen to you if they listen to, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, as I learned later, <laughs> I do have a very quiet voice, like, because I talk, I say in my golf course voice all the time. So I can always talk while people are playing, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, we were hosting a tournament. And so we had a banquet and I had a microphone and making uh, announcements, you know, for the next day and stuff. And one of my girls said to me, coach, that's the first time I ever heard you. Oh my <laughs> gosh. How did they ever learn anything? Yeah. I said, well, that explains a lot right there. Yeah. But so, well, I know you have to enunciate when you're talking to people. And I did take speech class in college, you know. How to yeah, but I think what has to do with it is also what you know, that, that they were not particularly ambitious to make it big in golf. So it is not only coach, it's the reception part that, you know, got to be willing to be somebody. Right. Yeah. Or selective hearing, I guess, as we would right. say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of informative, uh, but um, so I, I I do appreciate like the girls that like, I've played with too, and that went on to coach like uh, mm -hmm. one of our friends, Therese Hessian, coached at Ohio State for many years. God bless them because you have to you can't talk to certain people at certain times because of recruiting things, and y you have to you know be strong and focused and I think I'm a little too friendly to fit into that model so mm. I was happy to not coach anymore yeah. but so then that brings us to about 2018 okay well let's a few years before that I went through all the typical women <laughs> change of life menopause my body's crashing I don't know what the heck's wrong with me Mm -hmm. uh, 
but you were still playing right not no 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 i wasn't and at all not at all i wish we had this that back that was probably 15 years ago no uh no i was maybe playing uh once a week we had a stetson golf league nine holes so that's not playing okay Okay. so just recreational wow yeah oh yeah Mm -hmm. and uh so then they came out with the senior women's open in 2018 and it was going to be the qualifier was going to be at lpga which is a course i played since they built it i knew it pretty well and i'm like you know maybe i should try this just to see where i am you know so i filled out the application to play in that and within three days we learned about asia oh wow and so uh long story there uh dorothy and david silverman were in town to do a presentation we couldn't go Dorothy's husband, Bill, had been telling me for years, he'd come, I'd be at the golf course, he'd go, man, you gotta drink this, you gotta drink this, and I'm like, get away. <laughs> you didn't You didn't know what it was, right? I didn't know what yeah, right. I said, I'm not doing any of that stuff, get away. So, um, but two years prior to this, Bob's twin brother died on mm-hmm. their 60th birthday while visiting us. Wow. So, that was pretty tragic obviously and bob was somewhat concerned you could say is an identical twin so um you know it's about taking care of yourself which we learned that twin probably didn't even go to the doctor once a year you know stuff like that but um can i ask what he died of uh, brain bleed blood pressure which Mm-hmm. maybe could have been managed i don't you know maybe don't know. well you never know yeah yeah uh but there's something about age 60 with guys that if you don't take care of yourself that's it because we know it's gonna show great. it's gonna start showing yeah yeah so um yeah so and your was, husband bob was kind of taking care of himself or not, not uh, really? probably could have been a little bit better mm-hmm. uh but um you know, everyone tries to self-medicate and, you know, they all had their allergies and they would take this and that. And actually, oh. I asked one of the doctors where when the twin was in the hospital, um, he said a lot of times even taking too much Benadryl can do stuff. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Cause that. Yeah. Like, no, none of the drugs are without side effects. That's people kind of think that they buy something and it's approved. It's It's safe. No. Yeah. yeah so um so we meet them for coffee downtown and bob went with me to say you're not buying anything because he's known for being a little thrifty and oh <laughs> i i as he says never say no to anything <laughs> okay. so and i didn't know what it was and i didn't care i was just, it was just we we're just going to be nice right so we go and David, as you've heard, tells how he learned about it for his father and, you know, a few things about it, like within 10 minutes. And Bob just says, you know, if even half of this is true, we'd be stupid not to try it. Wow. Went, Whoa. <laughs> wow. You didn't expect that. Not at all. So we started drinking it. And I clearly had to start practicing more because I just signed up to play this tournament, which is four months away. Well, okay. let's say what it is because you only said ASEA. Oh, so it's what it the, is. Yeah, the redox signaling molecules, which it, in short, it energizes your body. It makes your body cells act like when you were 10 years old. Right. So, um, like... And did I understand what that was then? No, probably not. So, but a month later, I'm hitting balls on the driving range and I just kind of went, oh my God, I feel like I did 30 years ago when I was playing all the time. And you didn't play it all those years actively, (laughs) right? No, and that was one month after drinking two ounces twice a day. Wow. I thought, But that took your attention. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it did. And then I had been going to a, one of those workout places pretty regularly and they measure you you know all your places your arms your legs and 
And in a year, nothing had changed. So six weeks after starting to drink this, I lost a few pounds and every measurement went down like a half inch, quarter inch, yeah, everywhere. I thought, isn't that kind of interesting, right? But you so, were also able to to train harder. So that- Yeah, I was playing. Sure. Yeah, I met some guys at the course who were good amateur players and I was playing with them at least twice a week and mm -hmm. you know, hit balls in between and playing whenever I could. And I forgot so, to ask, did you both take it or just you? No, we both, we both were doing it. And actually for Bob, he was kind of a couch potato, like not a lot of energy. And he kind of had a little blood pressure thing, mm -hmm. although he was on medication. But all of a sudden he started walking every day, walking. And he walks now five or six miles a day. How wonderful. So, and we did that, of course, during the shutdown period of time we did a lot of walking anyway so um i at four months the day after my qualifier i go to my doctor for the annual blood work and i walked in and she said wow your blood work is better and i'm like really <laughs> she said yeah you're uh can i say the oh, i'll say the blood lipid level thing that everybody's concerned about that they take oh, us you just say it, of course cholesterol yeah. okay you're, my cholesterol went from 220 to 175. So I said, well, isn't that nice? I said, I'm drinking this stuff. And I showed her the pouch and she at least looked at it and didn't really say much else. And yeah. I said, okay. So I'm drinking it. And we didn't really know about drinking more or like athletically to when you stress your body, you should drink a little more before and after. And I probably didn't really know that yet then. But I had horrible sinus infections every year. I haven't had one since. Hmm. Our dental cleanings are better. My gums don't bleed. My pockets are better. And I'm older. You yeah. know, it's just. Things it's, that are supposed to get worse. Right. Yeah. And the things that run in your family, like my dad had a heart bypass by age 60 and I'm past that. Mm -hmm. I'm on no medication. I go to the cardiologist every year and every year he's like, wow, I'm so proud of you. You're doing so well. And then I show him this stuff and he's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, the, the doctor, that's the thing, you know, it, it, I, but it's when you think of it, and I, I remember somebody was talking to me about, well, if it's so good, why my doctor doesn't know about it? And I was asking her back, it was like, when was the last time your doctor recommended something that is natural and he doesn't make money of it? Right, right. It's 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 drugs or surgery, drugs or surgery. It's a, It's really our own responsibility to take care of us so we don't need the exactly. doctor. Exactly. Not that we're saying you never need one, but our um, urologist, who's also been on this about 14 years, he's doing a webinar and he the first thing they say is, I'm here to tell you what your doctor does not have time to tell you about. Yeah. But he also does understand supplementation. and Which is, stuff. thank God. There are, of course, right. there are some wonderful doctors. Right. They do. Wow. And I just had a pharmacist who I spoke to five or six years ago about it and he looks way older now <laughs> but he says oh i have this uh hyponatremia okay too much sodium in your body yeah and i said it's only one two point one two five milligrams and he said i can't take any so you know mm -hmm. we had a new corporate call yesterday and i asked um our science guy what about this salt thing and it, it's it's so negligible that you know people eat whatever they eat all day long and they're getting it's uh what do you say it's five percent of your salt allowance for the day yeah if so, you eat any processed food you get so much sodium into your body that you have no idea what you're talking about yeah right right so, but let's go back yeah. to what okay. was what was happening for bob anything so, um well he actually oh, i just remembered this we were gonna take a vacation in the fall 
and his do the same doctor we went to he called him in and he was having blood pressure stuff like this is within the first year or so and I mean, at times his blood pressure would be 180 over something. And if that was like that for me, I'd be like freaking out running. The yeah. <laughs> but that's why he was sitting on the couch because he didn't feel good, mm -hmm. you know? So, and I'm thinking we're going to North Carolina. I hope there's a hospital in the area. I'm trying oh to figure gosh. out. Yeah. Um, but then he started, he started thinking and he took the job. And he started rubbing it on his head. I think he was still super stressed from his mm -hmm. brother too. And, yeah. and, you know, so he said, well, that's near my brain and it'll maybe calm me down. So he started putting the gel there and spraying it. He sprays it on his head every day and he felt calmer mm -hmm. and he could breathe better. He always had allergies always and he snored really bad. So when he quit snoring, I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, is he dead? Like his this is a miracle. <laughs> so you can finally sleep. I know. I know. It was yeah. like weird. <laughs> so um, so yeah, whoop, we all had pretty good benefit stuff, even though you know, it's just, it's they keep coming whether you don't really realize it or not. So now, like, I'm in the sun a lot, mm -hmm. playing golf for over 50 years. Um, I actually don't even use sunscreen much anymore. No. I put this on before and after. I'm not saying it's sunscreen, no, it's but not. it's skin renewal and, and regeneration and... You know, I see people and they really are surprised when I tell them how old I am. So that's a good sign, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. let's go back to, so you started taking it just about when you were getting ready for that tournament. So how did that turn out for you? So the tournament, I played pretty decently. I shot a very solid one over par on my back nine, but I missed it by two shots. No. But... That was the first competition in 23 years. Correct. I mean, so, yeah. And I played. So this was in June. And it, um, in August, there was an LPGA National Championship, which I'm about to go to again in another week. Uh, but it was at Pinehurst on the number eight course. And so I went up and played in that. And one of my friends I was playing with caddied for me, who still caddies for me. And he's 77 and can still shoot his age. So he's a good player. Um, but so I'm up there playing that tournament. And wow, it's kind of fun. And I made the cut. I didn't even know there was a cut because I'm just, I'm grateful I can be playing again, you know, after all this time. And uh, played pretty decent. And I, so that was kind of the end of the season the end of August. I'm like, oh, now I guess I need to start hitting balls and work on my game. Well, I started hitting so many, I started getting pain and then frozen shoulder, which a lot of people our age yeah. tend to get. So I couldn't even put my arm, hand even slightly behind my back. So I went to an orthopede who is a golfer. I said, don't put any bad chemicals in me. I don't want it, you know, and but he did give me some shot that really relieved it a little bit that I could start moving it and stuff. And so I really lost kind of the next year. Mm -hmm. And then I started, you know, playing again. And um, so I've been playing and more the last two years. I've been hitting it really well and just not getting it in the hole quick enough. So I've been working on that and I'm kind of really excited for the next couple of tournaments because I really feel like I'm hitting it better than I did back then. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is new technology golf club wise, but um, I just feel like I have a better understanding of my swing and you know, it's just, I guess just being, you know, having had all the experience of playing for so many years and it's just kind of fun that like wow you know managing myself on the course better so 
Do you mind saying how old you are? No, I'm. I got my Medicare card. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, fortunately, I'm not using it that much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, no, I'm only asking because, you know, when people relate to stories like that, of yeah. course, we realize that after 50, we start aching all over the body. It's kind of natural progress that, you know, it doesn't work as it used to, all of these things. And you don't even have to have some particular medical issues. It's just the regular kind of aging and, and we kind of, consider it normal you know like uh, and so I just for me I realized that all these achy kind of age-related stuff went away really quickly with with the uh, redox signaling molecules my body was responding better and I I was told by a surgeon because I had three surgeries in my lumbar and the last one was fusion that I should never lift over 10 pounds. I should never do any heavy lifting again. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, surprise, I'm deadlifting 135 pounds with, <laughs> with my trainer. And that was not supposed to get better. That was only supposed to get worse. Because right. once, you, once you do these adjustments that are very aggressive for the body, invasive, it, you know, it comes with side effects too, because I, I remember the last, the last surgery left me in severe chronic pain and and pain down the leg and I had issue to sit for a long time and stuff so you really start worrying that it's only gonna get worse from that point on and right that's why I'm asking your age because you didn't play for actively for over 20 years you were raising family and everything and then you jump back qualifying for tournament and you are in your late 50s was it then right you know? right and and boom and you are performing and you are qualifying and you are playing tournaments that's for some people i remember dr silverman talking about he used to play golf once a week and he would use painkillers before he right. went to the court and right. after right. and for him being on this also changed the whole game because now he's like just like if something hurts he rubs the gel on it and it's non-toxic that's what's he plays, fascinating yeah, he plays every day a lot too and sometimes cool. two I games mean, a day yeah exactly right, big right. difference yep well and i i my thing is too i don't ever want to use the excuse that i'm getting older and i can't do something and so far i haven't and we do have steps in our house, inside and down to the garage. 16, I counted them and did a video just to show, hey, I run up and down these steps just like I always have. Hmm. And I know people move out of their houses to avoid steps. And I'm like, you want to be able to do steps. Yeah. I mean, if you absolutely can't, yeah, okay. But I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. I want, it keeps you moving. You you want to keep challenging yourself. Yeah, we were actually one of those that moved to Florida. And because of my husband, who already had several challenges, we bought the house without stairs. And the truth is, the one we had in Connecticut had a huge flight of stairs, two stories that were high stairs. And usually when I was all the way down in the garage, I realized I forgot something that was all the way up in a bedroom so i kept running those stairs up and down pretty quickly all the time and right. when we moved here you lose that you it's true it's absolutely mm -hmm. true but i we, do that too i get in the car i'm like dang i forgot yep <laughs> <laughs> up and down, yeah, up. exactly so that's yeah. that's a bit that's a good point that we are making our life easier mm -hmm. instead of there was some advertising long time ago the body in move body in motion stays in motion body in rest stays in rest and if we don't move it just starts it just start kicking there right so right. oh my gosh so with the with the golfing now mm -hmm. where do you stand well i'm <clears throat> Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of tournaments for seniors. Um, 
And this is this is kind of ironic in a way. When I played the tour back in the eighties, the money wasn't like it is today. So yeah. you kind of feel like you're the pioneer because I played four times a whole tournament, made the cut, and did not make any money. Like the money didn't even go all the way down. Uh -huh. Or it might have been fifty dollars when the whole week cost you at least a thousand back then. I'm right. Sure. Yeah. So um and I was showing up for the pro am parties when maybe the big stars weren't showing up because I understand these people are paying your money, you know, whatever. So you're kind of as like a pioneer back then. So now we fast forward to now. Um, all these same pros, a lot of them never stopped playing and they're still playing the legends of the LPGA, which is what the, and they're still just trying to get some tournaments going it's mm -hmm. like they just had the senior women's open in pittsburgh the whole purse was four hundred thousand dollars okay and that's usga who runs the men's the women all the other tournaments and and i don't know what the purses are for the younger men and women's thing but the winner gets more than four hundred thousand dollars Sweet. And that's the purse for the whole senior. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and here, this is what ties us all together. We know we're the same age ish about um, women just don't age as well as the men, mm. mostly. So, like when the men PGA players get to the PGA senior tour, they hardly lose a step. They just keep playing. Mm. So the women age 45 to 50, there's a lot of stuff that happens to your body. True. Okay. Yep. And it's it's difficult to keep up the physicalness, right? <laughs> and so I see this so clearly. It's like, oh my God, if these women would get on this redox and keep your body younger, maybe modulate your hormones so you don't go through too much of the hot flashing and everything else that comes with it. Um, you know, maybe the younger players who have the bigger names that would bring name recognition to the senior tour, you know, would feel like playing more. And maybe, you know, some more money can follow and, you know, the whole thing. Hmm. So, but again, I feel like I'm a pioneer again, trying to help with them to build this senior thing. And then now they have they have five or six events that I've gotten to play in. Some are so limited, they only have a very small, like 20 people maybe playing it. Um, and uh, Jane Blaylock, who played years ago, kind of started this. So they have, you know, they have certain criteria, what makes it a Legends event and all that. Mm -hmm. But, um, I just feel like this could be such a boom. And I've been trying to, when I am at tournaments, and they're not very big fields, like we had 26 people play in Atlanta. Um, so, you know, full field tournament, normal tournaments, 140 people. Mm -hmm. And so even if you had half, 70, and, and they can't fill a field, you know, because for whatever, a lot of, the women won't come if they know they're not going to make enough money to pay their expenses. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you, you can't think they want them. to? Do you think they would want to? Do, is it still in them, that fire that they want to compete? But of course, yeah, but if you're traveling back. from California to Atlanta, right? you better have, make it worth your while to come. Yes. Yeah, you better have a yeah. chance. Yeah. And see, I'm just such on a different I'm so grateful I can play again, and I am fortunate and blessed that I don't need to make the money. It's not like I'm out there to earn a living because mm -hmm. there's not enough. There's not yeah. as many terms to play in. Um, but if you win something, at least you'll get some thousand, several thousand dollars, you know. Um, but then it drops real quickly. Yeah. But it costs you to, you know, to even get to that level. It costs right. you a lot. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's, it's all part of the process. Um, I'm learning. Um, and, 
yes, and I'm aging and I want to take advantage of playing while I can play, but I don't feel like I can't play next year because I'm getting older. I figure I can't wait to, for next year. I can't wait to go back to the course we played and I know I can play it better, you know? So, uh, isn't it sad that more people of your age group that would probably love to compete don't even know about this and they, they don't know that there are technologies out there that can actually really help them to get in better shape and optimal shape to be able to compete in any age right well i think they do look i mean some of them i've seen some of them working out pretty good before they get to the golf course like at the hotel gym you know and stuff i was mm -hmm. kind of surprised to see how much they were doing before playing uh we have krista johnson who finished ninth in the senior women's open she's a year older than me but she's also six foot tall and hits the ball pretty good but uh, she's been on it for over a year and she loves it. And our other um, cell performance packets, mm -hmm. like she'll mix the mind and the mood on the course for energy or not energy for focus and calming because, you know, you can get pretty worked up when you're in the heat of the battle and uh, your yeah. adrenaline and all that stuff. And I thought that was interesting because I'm like, wow, I think it would put me to sleep. Maybe. But but different people need different things. But so I, you, remember I asked you when we talked, because I remember when Asia first introduced those uh, cell performance drinks, that somebody on the stage was talking about testimonial that he hit a better golf game because his focus was sharper and he hit precisely and he noticed changes how he plays the game on the field. And I think that was with the mind. So I was asking you if you were using it because I don't play golf, but it's it's fascinating that you you think mind was considered to be like better focus and be sharp and remember better and focus on work. But of course it works in a golf game because you need to focus where, where the ball is going, right? Well, and you're out there for five hours. Right. So now I started spraying this. Mm -hmm on my face especially in this heat Good several idea. times around because i also have another friend lpga pro and i hope it's okay that i uh, maybe i won't say her name then but um she's in phoenix and she actually does brain mapping anyway she's mm -hmm. she's been she's a doctor she's been doing this stuff for years okay right. I saw her last November and she told me, Nancy, I did an experiment. I did a study with this like 12 years ago on the liquid. Wow. So she had, and she sent it to me and she had the subjects. It was, it was eight sprays to the face versus two cups of drinking the liquid. Okay. And then, she, so they drink the two cups and then they, go do their activity, probably putting and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she brain map them. And then the next time they do eight sprays to the face, we'll go do their activity. And, you know, I was a little shocked, but the eight sprays to the face was more effective. No than kidding. Than the two cups. Wow. Because it's closer to the brain. So I'm like, hmm. Okay, so I and I gave, I took to Atlanta. I took enough of these for every pro who mm -hmm. they wanted some, but if they didn't know anything about it, I wasn't just going to give them a bottle. You know, yeah. they have to understand what they're doing. But one lady from India, she was like, Oh my God, I'm going to pass out of the blah, blah, blood. I said, Here, just keep spraying your face when you're out there. And she said, Wow, that, that really helped. I didn't feel, you know, because you know, when you're overheated and you're out in the sun and you start getting the woozy stuff and you're you know when you're not going to be well and I I haven't gotten like that and I've been out in the heat and she said I didn't feel like I was going to pass out I kind of like that That's Inside, cool. and it's refreshing and it's outside and it feels cool when you spray it yeah so you know it's do I know how it works? Heck no. Do I care? <laughs> I'm just like gonna keep spraying. And I then... just wanna I just wanna kind of this is probably a good time to put a disclaimer out. 
because okay. we are chatting about something we are both familiar with and using for quite a few years. Uh, but it's uh, it's I just want to stress this is this is not intent or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment of any disease or illness. The redox signaling molecules are do not treat, cure, heal, prevent, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. They simply empower the body to heal itself by increasing cellular efficiency, functions, and communications. So I just want to make sure that somebody doesn't take it as a medical advice or we make claims that it does this or that. I think that's the biggest miracle of it, that it doesn't have any toxicity, so you cannot take too much, you can overdose, you can be allergic to it, it doesn't interfere with whatever else you're doing. It's just, there's nothing like that in the world, in my opinion. And it's there, there isn't. I mean, I mean, we've taken vitamins and stuff for years and you don't really know if it's doing anything. Yeah, and yeah. they are needed, they are yeah. building materials, but this is the mm -hmm. labor that makes sure that whatever you put in your body with food and supplements actually gets where it needs to go and get used, which is quite a big deal. <laughs> and you are a professional golfer and we have some Olympic medalists on it. And so for them, it cannot involve any banned substances for testing, right. of course, it cannot be. But why not take you know, advantage of being able to to train in optimal shape to recover faster from from you know hard training to be able to do more and actually succeed and i i know i follow uh sean uh burke that mm -hmm. he's a triathlonist i believe iron man yeah iron well, man yeah in his also late 60s i believe now and he's beating his own personal records from 20 years ago, which is absolutely right. fascinating to me. And right. I'm not an athlete, but I was like, if I was a professional athlete, would I look at it? Well, damn right I would. <laughs> because who well, doesn't yeah. want to have the advantage, right? If you can. Some people don't want to tell people because they want to keep the advantage, which Ooh. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm screaming it from who to whoever will it's, listen We to are it. sharing, we are sharing okay. because it's, it's really, it's so meaningful to us. And what we saw is possible, not only with athletes or performance, but really even in situation when something seemed hopeless and mm -hmm when you empower your body with the right tools that haven't been available 20 years ago, we didn't even know this existed. Right. Suddenly things start happening in the body when it has the right tools and miracles happen. It's, I have seen enough <laughs> in, on myself, on other people, on even animals. Animals don't have placebo effects. I was just showing some friends who just recently signed up. I just went over to take her a book. And she has two older dogs. One has a pretty big lump on his back. Hmm. And I just started spraying it. And they're like, really? You can do that? Yes. With your pets, you can't placebo a pet. You know, they'll just. And so that kind of opened their eyes to even more possibilities yeah. and stuff. So, Well, I think it's nice when people realize that their health is really in their own hands. Mm -hmm. When they realize that we are all taking it for granted until we don't have it. And then suddenly, boom, and it's the only thing we can tell, think about. And unfortunately, I know that we all have been in situations that either somebody very close to us or ourselves had some serious issues that seem to be impossible to resolve. And knowing that there is something out there that, that make empower your body to actually do what the body was designed to do brilliantly uh it's it's a mind boggling and it it still breaks my heart when i approach somebody who i know needs it and mm -hmm. can help and they mm -hmm. wouldn't even take a look and it's just mm -hmm. unfortunately that's the world we live in and a lot of people they will ask million times about sharing the best doctor for this and what pills they should take should they take this surgery but they will go for everything risky but they wouldn't look at something that cannot hurt them and that's 
that's to me it's it's a mindset you can't change unfortunately yeah. It's, yeah, hard. it's hard. Every, everything, it's hard. Everything, every medication, even over the counter, involves mm-hmm. risks. It has the LD50, the lethal dose of mm-hmm. 50. You can overdose on, on aspirin if you take enough of it. Right. And, and so, and I have been in nutrition world. I have been doing holistic nutrition for like cancer patients and people with with uh, compromised immune systems and everything so i was all about what food can do for your health which can do a lot and doctors don't talk about it either because they don't even know right but so i thought i knew everything there was out there to to help you know the the most natural ways because for me the doctor and procedures and uh, medication was always the last resort not the first i was always gonna look for how I can help myself first before I need some serious medical intervention. And, and then I learned the hard way that even the best diet and the best supplements and everything that I thought we were doing right didn't help. Mm-hmm. And it's just, that's fact, when yeah, you realize yeah. this, this could be the missing link that was really needed to, to uh, actually... these friends that just signed up, they, I, you know, I told her about it a long time ago. I remember her trying it at our house and like, oh, this stuff's terrible, you know. And yeah. so now she had been through a lot of stuff at the hospital, on, put on medication that made her really ill. And then she saw Bob again not too long ago. And she said, okay, I want to learn more about that stuff. Thank God. So they had to go through more worse stuff to yeah. realize it but well at least hopefully it's not too late but yeah it's better but late than a lot of people think like that because they don't they consider themselves healthy until something shows up you know and when you feel like you are healthy you're kind of cocky about it. it's like well i'm fine i don't need anything mm-hmm. oh you don't age <laughs> you know it's like but it's it's the it's the mindset and it's the priorities in life i think because i have i have friends who prioritize other things and then they got very 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 sick and suddenly priorities change overnight you know and it's just mind-boggling but it's like we cannot convince people who live their life the way they want to live that maybe it would add value to them just to know about this option because there's never been here before (laughs) that's true and yeah. I think I think I, I once heard Jim said that it could be is it it's a benefit or a curse because when something is absolutely unique in the world, people distrust it more yeah. or they are being suspicious about it. And if you are suspicious, just just test it on yourself. We have we have ways to to make you believer within 10 minutes if you are open to it with no risk, but that's that's for another time. <laughs> yeah, and it, it can't I, hurt and it might help. I right. And that's what I've been saying a lot lately, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then like, I've even become in contact with a lot of college coaches and stuff. And I said, look, I coached. I know what you cannot have. I know mm-hmm. what, I wouldn't even tell you about this. Exactly. It was yeah. bad, but it's still, they're, but, they're you fair. Know, you know, yeah, they're all so you know, we were talking yeah. about pain before and i you know i have spent over two years after my last surgery in different various therapies physical therapy therapy in the pool different different modalities that were available at that time in connecticut where we lived then i started spending my own money to to get acupuncture uh you know pain management with uh all kinds of injections into me and nothing was helping or at least not long term it was very temporary and would go right back to where it was yet nobody say the pain management is is not working even though when they are successful 50 percent of the time possibly and it's temporary relief people believe it as a, as a bible and it's then we learn later what it does to your joints and it's really not good to to have repeated steroid injections into your joints or body or my in my case in the spine and 
the doctors don't tell you the risks. They, well, let's see if we can help you from the pain. And it wasn't, I, I actually gave up on it myself because I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Why, why do I keep doing it if it's not making anything better? And I was on different medications. That was the same thing. I still had the same issue like without it. So I eventually talked to my neurologist and was like, I want to get of this because I had the different issues that were coming up because of that medication and we got rid of it eventually and nothing changed I was still in the same pain I was before when I was taking it so to find something that actually worked and I don't have those issues anymore because my body is able to deal with it on its own it's it's, it's unbelievable for me yeah that's awesome you look great too you and you are an excellent cook. May I throw that in? We loved excellent your what cook. Your, your Mediterranean feast that you made for us was awesome. Well, thank you so much. I I used to have a very good business like that. Yes, <laughs> that, it was it cool. was really joy. I was I was so glad we could finally meet for the first time in person and. And I know it was like brief visit because you were on the way to see your family, but still grateful that that's, that's another thing I love about this company. We, uh -huh. we all came to this company for whole different reasons, uh -huh. uh, but it's, I, I said it once that, you know, when I used to work at different companies or I ran my own business, uh, you deal with different business people. There's always somebody who doesn't sit well with you or you it's like you just consider jerk or boosting or whatever something doesn't sit well with you or they are triggering you <laughs> i have yet to find that person at asia the community that i found with these people that are devoted to bring this mission to the world yeah. it's it attracts all the right people and i i entered this company briefly after my husband died. I was really in no mood or shape to start something new. And everybody I just met over the phone or over the Zoom were there for me like the best friends I never met, I never had. And it was absolutely moving for me because I remember Amy Stacy that you know very well. And if anybody's interested, she was my first very first guest on this podcast so first oh, episode was amy stacy she was a hospice nurse for years uh, 35 i think plus and she had her own story why she started working with this technology mm -hmm. and but when i first met you met the people on a zoom call and she learned that i just lost my husband a few months before that she called me and we spent like an hour on the phone Absolute, wow. absolute stranger to me but if you know in my mind it's like if you are a hospice nurse you have to be very very special kind of person to be able right. to do that right. work and I just I will never forget it she spent an hour with me on the phone we were crying we were talking about things I needed it it was so helpful and because I hardly had anybody to talk to here and it's just you you don't forget these things that this company really attracts very special people. And I think I found new meaning for me when I when I started sharing this with others because I have seen changes in them. And I have done sales my whole life, different things. Never ever again was somebody calling me back with the tears in their eyes telling me, oh my God, you have no idea how yeah. my life changed thanks to you. Never. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Somebody said that we got paid in goosebumps and it's really true because none of us is in it just for money. It's, it's you know, and when somebody says, well, of course it's a business. Yes, it is business. What isn't? <laughs> you go buy food is the business for somebody. Of course it is. We are all surrounded by it. It's like the world wouldn't function without business. But when you find the right purpose for you and the right reason and the right thing what you sell mm -hmm. it has a whole different meaning and i think for you as well because i i wish you can start doing some kind of presentations for fellow women in the golf that are your age and then maybe they don't 
they don't participate enough anymore because like you said it's it costs a lot of money to get in certain level and then knowing that you have no chance would prevent you from even participating and they don't know that maybe that may not be the reality for them what wow. can we do to change keep, keep working on it keep talking and we'll talk eventually to the right people who will help put it all together true, true. And that's one of the reasons I love to do this podcast because I love to feature, feature people that not only have their own story, what happened to them, but they are using it to help others or inspire others to, to, to do something that could change their life significantly. And I'm sure there are some women like you that still love the game, absolutely love the game and just feel like, well, I'm getting too old. I can't really do it. And it's just a shame. <laughs> no you're not i know well yeah. we'll tell them one at a time <laughs> we will tell them well yeah uh they are more open to look at what is out there that can help them naturally more holistically and that's that's why we talk about this and i don't talk about redux all the time even though i absolutely love it and i'm very passionate about it but this was a good opportunity to 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 have Nancy on and and share her experience because I really didn't know much of your life until we talked about it today and it's so interesting. So Bob never regretted that he said yes to it, didn't he? No, yeah, in fact he he drinks a lot of it now. <laughs> good. Hey. We both get the the bundle like every other week, so we have it. Make sure we have it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So what do you do today compared to how how is your life looking like compared to when you were in your 30s, 40s? Other than my kids aren't here anymore. <laughs> That's a big change. Hey, yeah. Well, I have more time to work on myself and it is my mission right now to physically stay as good as I can. I uh, go to Pilates. I have a new movement spine guy, which he works pretty good, especially right after Pilates. Um, we're actually playing golf tomorrow morning. So wow. he was a hockey player. So they notoriously slap at the golf ball. But, so I'll be curious to see his golf swing. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Um, but, um, and yeah, we continue to, we live in a pretty good neighborhood for walking and that has hills. So I keep wanting to do that. And I've done a me strong race, like a 5k race the last three years. Wow. It's February, first Saturday in February. And I i am not really a runner. I tried that a long time ago, got a stress fracture in my foot and I said that. Mm. And, uh, but anyway, so i um, improved my time each year last year i walked as fast as i could the whole time and actually ran the last quarter mile wow look at you and i bested my time a couple minutes and i looked and i was like 12 of all the women in my age group and i'm like wow i didn't know they kept all that stuff so now hmm. i obviously want to do better next year but i'm gonna to have to run more because wow. i yeah, I walked fast as much as I could. So anyway, uh, so that's... But that's walk. just the drive that you have to constantly challenge yourself. That's yeah, so I'm kind of excited about that. And um, uh, my movement spine guy, he's he does 100-mile races. So he's like, oh, we're going to work on that. We're going to get to Oh, that's it. crazy. Ooh, so, ooh, that's crazy talk. <laughs> yeah. So that, that sounds, you know, besides wanting to be ready for golf next season because after there's still a couple more tournaments in november a couple two day things um but then you know it's pretty quiet till probably next may or june so my son lives in dayton ohio and we have which i didn't know this year but we were up there and they were having an ohio women's open with the senior division which i could have but I didn't even know it till we were there. I said, next year. He doesn't keep an eye on things for you? Well, he will now. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and it'll be interesting because he wants to caddy for me and he's never caddied for me. Um, so I'm kind of excited. To yeah, that's, that's do that next uh, Early June, I guess, will be. And I'm trying to get his company. Why don't you talk to the company about sponsoring something for the tournament? 
This is fantastic. You know, when you when you think of it, I live in a retirement community, not not retirement community, 55 plus community. And listening to you and you are excitingly planning what else can you do physically and being surrounded by people like, well, I, uh, yeah, no, I have to give up that long time ago because I can't even, you know, I have to realize that in my age. And I remember even doctor telling my husband that, what do you expect in your age when he was complaining about pain and stuff? It's a very different world and mindset when you think of it, yeah. because I think when we take charge of our health and start just challenging, see what's possible, it's whole big empowerment. And and it's not like you are, you are in hands of somebody who, it's your life it's like we have one life we have to do the best possible for ourselves and i love when you before we got on the recording we started sharing our experiences with personal growth and personal development and i think that's a big part of your success too because that challenge mentally also keeps you in a high game because you have to control your emotions and and mood swings and stuff like that that's required as well. That's a big part of you being successful golfer that you constantly grow up here as well. Not only well, physically. And staying um, focused and not being influenced by outside. Yes. Like I've never wanted to do what everybody else does. And I didn't realize how much time like that, but yeah. I still have an Apple phone. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, through and especially that book we were just talking about really makes you look at yourself and actually do yes that's it I listened to it twice I it's mean, actually let me just saying yeah. said for people that are listening to this I I bought an audiobook but I realized I I need to read this. I, I when I'm when I'm listening to something, it it I, like my mind sometimes uh, you know loses the track. So somebody just recommended this book, Mac Two, with your hair on fire, and it's by Richard Blisbrook, The Art of Vision and Self Motivation. And I think we all may need some uh, some support in this arena. And we constantly, I, I'm constantly reading new books, and it's very similar approaches but a different way to bring it to to you until it finally clicks in the brain and makes the connection well as a golfer i always have visualized especially courses i knew real well and liked like playing them like the night before or even six weeks before i get to somewhere so i'm used to visualizing and i'm like Mm -hmm. i need to visualize these other things not just that yeah, so that's that was fun to start delving. I think that's re that's easier what you say to visualize the game and visualize you maybe winning or hitting that shot because it's so real for you. It is easier to imagine the success than let's say you set up a goal for yourself and it is hard for you to believe that you can actually achieve that goal. So it is hard for you to experience like you are already there and winning it's it's much harder than to the game the game is very natural for you it's 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 your whole life you know what it is so yeah I can imagine it actually feels like and I can give you an example the last tournament the night before I did not sleep well I didn't my stomach didn't feel good I hit warmed up on the range before and it was not feeling good Mm-hmm. I got out on the course and I hit it great. I felt great. It's like I'm in my space in my happy place. I guess. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was even surprised at how much better I felt once I was out there. You know, so this I- is interesting what you just said, because um, I don't know if you know that, but when, before we moved to America, we were in production business with my husband and we, he was a personal manager to one of the most famous Czech singers at that time. And through him, we met everybody in the show business in Czech Republic, everybody who meant something we we knew personally. And this is very similar with show business people. They may be sick like dogs, 
they enter the stage and suddenly it goes away because th that adrenaline that comes, if they they want to be there, they want to, the, the energy that comes back from the audience to them, it just puts them in a whole different state of mind. And it's I have seen this repeatedly, what you just said about the sports. Mm -hmm. It's when you feel that's your element, this is where you shine, this is your place. A lot of things go away. <laughs> That seemed impossible. I love that. That's that's really good. Back two tournaments that I won, um, mini tour thing, and actually Tory Pines, I finished third when I needed money to keep my card. I was in so much pain, you know. I didn't know this physical stress from the having two tournaments left, and I have to make this money and. Mm. And the fog rolled in, the fog rolled out. You know, you're sitting there all wait, the whole thing. And I was a wreck. And then I ended up shooting 69, 72, 69, and made $12,000. And then I'm like, wow. <laughs> but I wasn't even thinking about the golf. I was just trying to survive and get through each day. And I had another tournament again that where I ended up winning this mini tour event in Orlando. And I was, at a wedding the night before in Wellington. <laughs> but, and I even had a playoff with that one too and one. And I'm like, I don't even care. I just want to go home, <laughs> but I want to. <laughs> well, because it's, it's your gift comes out and that's who you are. And that's what I'm meant to do. I think okay. so. Yeah, I think you so. It, it's, it's power because you, and it's fascinating for me because you always knew what you want to do. Some people, never figure it out or they keep swinging from one thing to another it's just that's fascinating to me you 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 grew up in it you loved it you loved it as a kid you you work on getting there getting there professionally improve coach train play it's just that was your whole life and that's actually admirable really yes thank you yeah well let's just figure out how we can help others to learn about this secret tool that can yes. give them unfair advantage in their game <laughs> well, we'll have to title this uh well i actually have on my redox golf pro page uh you know you don't stop playing because you grow old <laughs> you grow old because you stop playing that's absolutely true and i first heard that nancy lopez had a t-shirt made 34 i don't know a long time ago hmm. And I said, that's the greatest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. And it means obviously something different to me now than then. But um, yeah, we have to get the word out to our age people for sure. You know, I, a lot of things click in our brain at certain right times. Like, I, like with that personal development, whatever we hear, when when it's not the right time, you 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 don't grasp it and then you hear it repeatedly and maybe a little differently and suddenly it starts making sense because you are you are in different state of mind or different experience or different age right i think this was just beautiful ending to our conversation absolutely right so nothing nothing is uh out of reach if you have all the right tools yeah and if you are open enough to explore them Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. this was fantastic nancy i enjoyed it so much i hope we motivated some people to to not give up on themselves because really life is short and why don't live it fully as long as we can and use whatever we can to make us feel that way it's absolutely stunning i love the success you made and you have for yourself congratulations Right and now. I hope you're going to play for a long time and kick butt and enjoy yourself because it's, you can tell it's your life and you really enjoy the game. It's, it's such a pleasure for me to meet you and meet your husband. And I know we are just at the beginning. Yes, we are. And thank you. I'm, I really enjoyed our visit and I'm sure we will have many more. Thank you so much. So if you are, Following the golf tournaments, look for Nancy Rubin Sharf. She may surprise you on the court. <laughs>
real soon. Thank you so much for your time. It was a really pleasure. Thank you.